talk to you about a once in a lifetime opportunity that you have before you. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to change the world around you. Because you see, there's a transformative technology on the horizon that's going to radically reshape our world. And that technology, of course, is artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is going to be transforming our world just like all of these previous disruptive technologies. Just like the steam engine did at the beginning of the 1800s, just like electricity did at the beginning of the 1900s, and just like the computers did beginning in about 1980. All of these are technologies that we economists call general purpose technologies. They're technologies that are constantly improving, and importantly, they're technologies that apply not just in one area, but they're technologies that are going to impact most sectors, most industries, most areas. As a result, they are very much transformative. Now, the other thing that you'll notice about these types of technologies is that they don't come around every year. For that matter, they don't come around every decade. They tend to come around once in a lifetime. And so aren't you lucky that you're living in an age where AI is set to disrupt everything around you? It's an opportunity for you to leverage this technology and reshape the world in the way that you want. The AI revolution, I would argue, started about two years ago. It started with the launch of ChatGPT. ChatGPT, when it came on, did two main really important things. The first one is that it ushered in the era of generative AI. We moved from predictive AI to generative AI. Now, to be clear, predictive AI is nothing to sneeze at. It is actually incredibly important. Predictive AI allows us to predict what molecules are going to be able to, so to solve, to sort out which diseases. It also is helping us feed hundreds of millions of people because it's helping us predict crop yields. And perhaps, Almost as importantly for some of us, it helps us pick better movies that we're going to enjoy. But generative AI, and by the way, predictive AI, also is what is behind generative AI. Because generative AI is nothing more than predicting the next word or predicting the next pixel. But let's talk about generative AI. The reason why generative AI is so exciting is that it has expanded the universe of things that AI can do tremendously. So now all of a sudden, AI is not just about prediction. Now it's able to write. It's able to get a whole bunch of material, of content, and synthesize it. It's able to generate ideas for you. It's able to program, it's able to analyze data, it's able to do math, and of course, it can generate pictures and videos and music and all kinds of other things. Now, it's getting better every day at doing these things, and this list is also expanding almost by the week. And so think about all the possibilities of what you're going to be able to do with these technologies. That's the first thing, right? That's the first thing that ChatGPT brought along. But I would argue that the more significant thing that it brought to us is that it has moved us into the age that I call the age of AI for all. In other words, AI used to be something that resided in the back office of our biggest firms, in our research centers, and all of a sudden it was at your fingertips and at my fingertips. At the fingertips of every Canadian and of every citizen of the world. And it got better from there because now we also have Llama, right? So Meta's Llama is an open source, best-in-class model that anyone can use and anyone can build on. So imagine the possibilities. Imagine what you can do with all of these technologies. What I want to do today is I want to help you think about the opportunities. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to give you a framework for thinking about how these technologies are going to be adopted over time, how the coming transformation is going to unfold. It turns out that all of these technologies that I was mentioning earlier actually followed the same adoption path. And it's been a path with three distinct phases. Right? And so the first phase is replace, the second phase is reimagine, and the last phase is redefine. Let me tell you a little bit what each of these phases are. Right? So the replace phase, this is where the new technology replaces the old technology, keeping fixed the existing processes, the existing structures, the existing business models. It's not until the reimagine phase where people finally fully wrap their heads around the potential of new technology and they begin to reimagine entire processes, entire business models, entire structures. This is where the disruption happens in the reimagine phase. And of course, eventually, this technology combines with other technologies to create entirely new things. 
Now I realize that at this point, this is all a little bit abstract for you. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and illustrate this for you, right? Using the example of electricity. And I'm going to focus on these first two because these are the ones that we're going to be seeing coming out of AI in the next 5 to 10 to 20 years. So let's talk about electricity. Right, if you go back to the end of the 1800s, we had these factories. And these factories were powered by a single on-site steam engine that had to be run at scale. Right, now what that meant was that because you had a single power source is that every workstation within this factory had to be connected to the steam engine through one of these line shafts. And these line shafts couldn't be too long. They also had to be in relatively straight lines. And so that forced a certain structure to how these uh, factories had how they were shaped and specifically they typically tended to be very vertical because that way you could have everything close to a single power source. Now if you fast forward 20 years then we move into the replace phase of electricity and specifically people realize that we now have a better technology for delivering power. Electric engines are they perform much better they're more efficient or more reliable and so what did they do? They took out the steam engine and they put in the electric engine. Now that certainly brought some productivity improvements, but they're relatively minor. And the reason why they were relatively minor is that the rest of the factory remained unchanged. They had not yet reimagined the factory around the new technology. That didn't happen until about 20 years later. Right? So fast forward another 20 years, you now have people finally wrap their heads around the true potential of the technology. And specifically, they realized that some of the constraints that existed with the steam engine, namely that it had to be run at scale, you had to have a big steam engine, no longer existed with the electric engine. And that meant that you could have a whole bunch of little electric engines scattered throughout the factory. And specifically, every worker could now have their own little electric engine. And what that meant was that you no longer needed these line shafts going to the single power source. And as a result, you could reimagine the factory floor in a much more logical way so that the outputs from one station became the inputs of the next. In other words, you now have the rise of the modern assembly line. Right? And the best example of this is the Ford Model T assembly line from exactly this period, from 1913. A couple of months ago, I was asked, I was on a panel, and I was asked, is AI hack? Simple question. My response was, well, yes, it is hype, relative to what we're going to be seeing in the next two, three, or four years. But man, it is not hype relative to what we're going to be seeing in the next 10 or 15 or 20 years. In the next 10 or 15 or 20 years, we're going to see things that we can scarcely imagine today. And the reason is that it's going to take time for us to get into that reimagined phase. Right now, we are very much stuck in this replace phase, but eventually, we're going to reimagine the entire world around us, around artificial intelligence. So, what I want to do is, I want to give you a sense of how you can, what are the opportunities, how you can reimagine the world around these technologies. We're going to start with replace, right? And replace, the good news is, replace is very easy. Replace is very easy because you don't have to reimagine entire processes, entire business models. All of that stays the same. All you need to do is, you need to go and look at every single process. And you need to ask, where am I doing things within these processes that AI can do better? In other words, where am I doing things like writing, generating ideas, synthesizing content and data, etc., 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 all the things that we talked about earlier. <coughs> when you find those, odds are that AI can do them better, faster, cheaper than the way that you're doing it right now. And so that's fantastic, right? It means that we can just go in and start putting in the new technology, AI, taking out the old technology. And by the way, when I say the old technology, I often, it, it's often people that are doing these things manually or without the help of AI, and therefore much less productive. So you can just go in and start doing this, and of course you're going to get a big productivity boost. Now let me tell you that most of the senior managers, most of the executives out there in the world today are very much focused on this. They're very much focused on the opportunities in the replace phase. And I'm here to tell you that they're focused on the wrong thing. I'm here to tell you that all of you should be focusing on the reimagined phase because that's where you're going to be able to reimagine the world around you and disrupt those that stayed in the replace phase. Now, here's the bad news. 
The reimagine phase is hard. I can't give you a recipe. I can't tell you exactly how to do it. It takes creativity, it takes a little bit of luck. And if you guys are willing to stay until tomorrow, I guess we could do a workshop, but I suspect you won't want to. So, but let me, you know, share a few thoughts, right? So think about reimagine. So Henry Ford reimagined car manufacturing around electric engines. And in so doing, he reimagined manufacturing more generally. If we come closer in time to the internet age, right, you've got Jeff Bezos who reimagined book selling around the internet. And eventually he reimagined the whole retail industry around the internet. You also have Mark Zuckerberg who reimagined human connections around the internet. And actually, if we start thinking about it, we have all kinds of examples of reimaginings from the internet era. From Uber reimagining ride sharing to Netflix reimagining. Uh, entertainment, and of course Airbnb also reimagined the sharing of accommodations, and many other examples that we can think of. And so, all of, what all of these folks did is, they saw that they were in a moment in time where there was a radical technology that was going to change the world, and they seized the opportunities of that technology. Well, we're now in, in front of a different technology, and there's new opportunities for all of you, for all of us to reimagine the world around us. Now, how are we going to do that? Again, we're not going to be able to you know, do a whole workshop on it today, but I want to leave you with three really key questions that you should be asking yourself. The first question is, what constraints was a previous technology imposing that no longer exists? This is, I would argue, exactly what Henry Ford asked himself. Right? So you no longer have this old technology of steam that had to be run at scale. And so now you have new possibilities that no one had ever thought of before because they hadn't thought of the constraints. So that's the first question you should be asking yourself. The second question is, what tasks have become orders of magnitude cheaper than they were before? And in the case of AI, I would argue that these are tasks that require tacit knowledge. Because AI is a technology that captures tacit knowledge within its models and makes them available to other people or uses it to entirely automate tasks that require this task of knowledge. That's why, by the way, I think that uh, healthcare and education are ripe for disruption. But the last and I think most important question you should be asking yourselves is, what can I offer people, what can I offer the world that doesn't exist right now, that generates value that people are going to want that does not exist? How can I reshape this world? And that's a big question, but that is very much the question you should be asking yourselves today. We are in front of a really important technological revolution, and, and make no mistake, you've got two choices. You can either be a passenger and be disrupted by the technology, or you can be a driver that shapes the direction of this future technology and the direction of our world. And so I would encourage you to take this once in a life opportunity and to try and reshape the world. And hopefully, you'll do it for the better.